I love to shop, and I love to actually investigate things, and I love toys. So we were looking at SDR radios for a while, um, but um, you know the Flex and the Anon. But the more I researched it, the more money it looked like I was going to have to spend, and really, even if I got say a Flex 6500. I didn't look like I would have any real improvement in receive capabilities or transmit capabilities or audio quality. Um, so I said, you know, maybe I should look at spending my money somewhere else. KC9, VKV, K2KXK. Roger, well, your audio situation is uh, excellent. You know, I... I I couldn't uh, foresee uh, doing anything uh, better, you know, to your audio. I think you've uh, uh, created the uh, perfect uh, envelope for that. Uh, Oh, you know, other than possibly uh, an increase in the average uh, percent of uh, peak modulation, you know, which we all could use that, uh, you know, ideally... uh, you know, we would wind up with a, a 2 to 3 dB dynamic range um, of modulation there. Uh, so, you know, the meter never falls down to zero. It's just always up there if there's words. <laughs> you know, we could all use uh, something like that, Roger. True, but I don't... It, from my experimenting, at least on the digital side, and a little bit with the compression on this radio, doesn't seem like that's really doable without introducing um, an accompanying amount of hits. Uh, in fact, uh, per your listening skills, I've got the compression on this radio turned up all the way. And um, when I listen, at least locally, through the SDR uh, receiver, um, there's hiss in there, even when, uh, uh, when I'm not talking. And uh, also, of course, any noise you enter that once you you trigger the gate. But um, uh, I guess it it, it doesn't... I do get really good audio reports, so I guess it's not noticeable uh, or objectionable at any rate once it gets out over the air and gets a few hundred miles away, over. Oh, Roger, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, in uh, ham radio situation sideband is uh, if you have uh, a signal with uh, audio peaks uh, 10 dB above your noise level uh, that's a good signal you know so that's uh, you know that would be a minus 10 noise level so I'm sure the hiss in your uh, uh, your uh, audio chain is uh, probably around uh, maybe uh, 40 so it's not going to uh, show up uh, And uh, the other factor is that your audio, you know, and not like between you and me, you know, because we're like next door, but uh, down the road uh, when you have a marginal situation and the incoming signal is uh, maybe uh, 3 dB above uh, noise, uh, uh, so you know you're going to have a a time getting there. Uh, That's when that uh, 3 dB of dynamic range in your audio chain comes in handy because it just, you know, kicks... uh, kicks whatever on your uh, audio down the road, you know? Yeah, affirmative. Well, I guess the other situation there is the uh, the other uh, option there when you get uh, into those situations is to narrow down the bandwidth of the transmitted signal a little bit. So you are uh, putting more energy into a narrower uh, pipe, so to speak, right? I don't think so. I think for intelligibility, that's the first thing that's going to suffer in a marginal signal. I think you want to leave the top end, maybe roll some of the bottom, but, you know, leave the top end there because that's all the articulation and intelligibility uh, in the uh, in the transmission line, you know. So uh, certainly uh, you want. I don't think you want to uh, start rolling it in the top end because there goes the, uh, you know, the syllabic range. <laughs> and the uh, intelligibility with it. It's kind of like if I were to put my hand over the microphone, you know, it's like going through a wall, whereas if I'm into the mic direct, you know, it sounds uh, a lot better. No, I agree with you. Uh, The high end is definitely important. I was thinking more about rolling off the low end. 
and I uh, wonder what you think about uh, the ESSB uh, topic as someone who's a, a critical audio listener and uh, um, um, someone who's interested in audio and uh, these signals that are uh, four to four and a half K wide. Go ahead. Are you talking like AM modulation? No, I'm talking about the the uh, ESB. E SSB, it's called extended or enhanced SSB. Um, you know, m many radios, m most of the older radios, um, have a, either a fixed or a limited uh, bandpass on transmit. Uh, for example, the maximum bandpass on this um, on this radio is 2.8 K. It's adjustable, um, but. Uh, the widest I can make it is to roll roll off the low end at 100 and the top end at 2,900. But some of the SDR radios uh, allow you to um, roll, uh, not roll off the high end until 4K or, or even above. Um, and of course, your signal is, is uh, correspondingly, correspondingly uh, wider. And uh, obvious, the obvious uh, result is um, more uh, more highs and a better sounding signal. Uh, I don't, you know, it doesn't really interest me. Um, SSB is intended for communication, but uh, you know, like both of us are interested in the quality of our audio. It can be that much better. So I've been doing some reading on it, and I've been disturbed by seeing some really wide signals on the band. But of course, if there's, you know, the advocates of it seem to say, you know, if they wouldn't do it in a contest situation when the band is really crowded. But if the bandwidth is there, why not use it? Over. Roger, I think, uh, you know, uh, this is a 2.5, a 2.4 radio. And I think we're uh, out to about uh, three. Uh, do you have uh, uh, um, capabilities of monitoring that? No, yeah, Roger. I'd say you're closer to 2.8, but it's uh, I can't see it digitally. I can only see a picture of it with my filter and superimposed on it. Go ahead. Uh, Roger. Well, if I was uh, to kick much uh, syllabics around, uh, I'm sure that it would be Sace, Sace headed towards uh, 3. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, that's from a 2.4. You just uh, EQ uh, hotter uh, uh, in than their roll-off, Roger. Yeah, Roger. Um, I, was, I didn't understand that initially. Um, but um, I think I understand it a little better now, and that's those, what we call what the, what the uh, transmitter is doing is rolling off, not cutting off. It's not a, uh, a really sharp, sharp skirt on that filter. So yeah, right. If you uh, increase uh, the relative strength of the uh, ends, edges of the bandwidth, it will come. It will show up in your signal. Yeah, Roger, and uh, it does uh, get uh, sharper as you approach three, you know. And at three, it's uh, it's a pretty rapid uh, roll at that. So, but uh, along the way from two point four to three, it's uh, not uh, as steep as from three on up. So uh, you do have a, a opportunity to uh, elongate the uh, the uh, band pass. Uh, but uh, I think that you know the more important thing is the. Uh, average uh, percent of uh, peak modulation, you know. And uh, to that end, I'm uh, hoping to be able to uh, work on a, uh, a limiter here in the future. And it's only going to be uh, maybe a 2 dB limiter or a 3 dB limiter, uh, as I will be running it. But uh, it should take my, uh, uh, my uh, range of uh, audio modulation to about uh, 3 dB and if I can get a 3 dB swing in the, you know window in the modulation uh, <laughs> it will uh, sound like uh, 5 kW, Roger. Roger, Roger. Uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, 
So you're running outboard compression now, right? But not limiting, no? Uh, no, I I'm uh, just uh, into the uh, ALC and... Uh, you know, I'm uh, to the right of uh, middle scale ALC, uh, which is uh, where I want to be. Uh, within the uh, ALC, uh, you know, uh, defined area, but n not uh, straight up or to, to the right, Roger. I'm sorry, you uh, kind of uh, felt down and come up, uh, try it again. Okay, I was asking uh, or just trying to confirm that you're running some type of compression. I think it's an external. Go ahead. Uh, very little, very little. Maybe uh, at this point, maybe uh, 2 dB or 3 dB of, uh, of compression. But uh, when you talk the difference between a compressor and a limiter, uh, you're talking uh, attack time and release time so quick that you, you can't even hear it uh, working, Roger. Okay. Um, so maybe the SDR, the new SDR radio, has that built in, but otherwise I assume you have to do it externally. Right? Uh, Roger, yeah, I would, uh, they, they uh, normally only... Um, are uh, putting into uh, control a uh, a compressor, you know, uh, that has uh, the comp compression ratios, whereas uh, the limiter, you know, is so much quicker. The uh, compressor uh, uh, sucks the signal up from the bottom, whereas a limiter uh, lowers the signal down from the top. So I would rather deal with uh, the top and uh, bringing that down as opposed to pulling up uh, noise and and uh, fans and uh, blowers and all that stuff, Roger. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Well, uh, so I assume you're looking around for uh, either to build something or a function to be able to do that for the radio chain, over. Uh, there's a station out there, uh, station, uh, try again, We're, you're right at the noise, but try again. Yeah, W2DRD. Uh, W2DRB, is that right? DRZ? Correct. What's the name? Did you say New York? And what's the name? Gosh, uh, you're right at my noise level. Try again for the name. Maybe uh, phonetically? I'm sorry, sir. You're right at my noise, and I've got somebody on adjacent channel just uh, giving me a bunch of uh, uh, QRM. Roger, roger. Is that uh, Tom? Is that Tom? Uh, yeah, stand by, Jim. W2DRZ in the group K2KXK. I can copy it, Tom. You are uh, just above the noise level, but I happen to be wearing headphones at the moment. And uh, I'm copying you Q5. Your audio sounds really good, considering the fact that, uh, as, we, as I said, your signal strength is low. Uh, and it's filling out the uh, it's filling out your signal very nicely. What uh, what bandwidth did you set it to? What radio are you running? You may hear it is ten kilo echo November, right?
Yeah, real good, Tom. Uh, Jim, are you, were you able to copy Tom? Go ahead. Uh, no, uh-uh. Okay, well, he's going to uh, sit on the side there for a while, but uh, we were able to copy him Q5, and um, he's uh, upstate New York, kind of in the, in the middle of, uh, looks like between Buffalo and Pittsburgh, they're closer to the lake. But, uh, Tom, you're doing a really good job. Uh, as I said, not, not very strong, but 100% Q5. Um, before you go, what kind of radio are you running that you uh, reset the, the band pass on? Over. Yeah, real good, Tom. Well, you did. Whatever I I didn't hear you before, but whatever you did seems to be working uh, because you look like you've got a nice. Uh, you're filling out the audio. The audio is filling out your signal quite well. Uh, unfortunately, Jim can't hear you out in uh, um, out in the Midwest there. So uh, back to you, Jim. And um, Tom was uh, had, had said he reset his. Um, audio band pass and had been doing some work on his FT-1000 and wanted a, a signal report, so I wanted to make sure he got that. Um, KC-9, VKV, K2KXK. Roger, Roger, Ken. I could copy a little bit, but he was right at my noise. Uh, Tom, uh, three's out of way, sir. Sorry we couldn't make it today. We, I think we uh, talked the other day, and uh, Tom is uh, an uh, ex-moon bouncer. <laughs> so, uh, or I don't know how X, but he he does have a career that uh, included uh, bouncing some stuff off the moon, and we had a little QSO about that. But uh, today the conditions aren't quite as good, Tom. So uh, uh, maybe uh, later on in the week we'll be able to uh, communicate together. But between now and then, three is that a we? And uh, have yourself a good day. So uh, where were we, uh, Ken, about uh, modulation? Uh, you know, the, that's the whole thing about uh, why a radio works or doesn't if uh, the audio gets from one point to the other. So the more we can do to uh, help the audio get from one place to the other uh, through all the uh, man-made noise and natural noise, uh, you know, and obviously... Uh, Radio today is uh, getting more and more uh, uh, disturbed by man-made noise. So we need to be sure that uh, we consult our ALC meters uh, to for correct uh, setup on the modulation. And uh, if uh, all is well and the creeks don't rise, uh, maybe uh, running uh, one to three on the uh, compressor. Uh, just depending on how things go and uh, you know you don't want to be uh, uh, overboard on the compressor and sucking up uh, uh, wind machines and fans and blowers and cats and dogs and stuff uh, but uh, you know up a little bit to fatten that signal up that that helps uh, quite a bit down the road so that's uh, would be my observation anyway yeah real good well we've uh, we've got a lot of compression in here per your uh for our A being tests that uh, or progressive tests that you helped me go with, uh, we're at eight now out of ten, um, and I turned it down a little bit because I, as I mentioned, I was uh, you thought it was good at ten. Here, I'll give you the ten. Dial there. Here's ten on the compression. Hello, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Uh, you didn't seem to think that was uh, too bad, right? Well, it's right there. It's right. Uh, it's close to uh, uh, full out. You're, you're at this at a ten. Your uh, dynamic range is about uh, three dB. As you speak, uh, the meter is uh, between uh, zero and minus three. Uh, very consistent, and that's uh, that's a good average peak modulation uh, uh, index, Roger. Yeah, yeah very good. Well, we put it back to eight. So we just so we have a little more in the tank. <laughs> I just uh, downloaded a tone generator that we'll be uh, playing with, um, and because uh, I've never had a chance to uh, apply any tones to this radio, and 
and see what the meters say. Uh, my ALC at this compression line is pretty hot. It's uh, not quite out of the out of the box, but certainly uh, it's occupying uh, the upper part of the scale. But um, I think I mentioned to you one time. I got, I had a guy. I called a guy back after a CQ, and before he acknowledged my call, the first thing he said was, "Wow, great audio, good." Oh, Roger, and it is. I think we had another station out there. Uh, if there's another station, go ahead. Kilo November four, Bravo Quebec Alpha. Just overheard you guys' conversation there, and quite fascinating about modulation. Am I doing any good to you at all? Can you hear me? Oh, you're doing an excellent job from uh, down in Georgia. Well, I'm in South Carolina, uh, about halfway between Columbia and Augusta, so I'm close to, close to Georgia, but not quite. Uh, right out of a little town called Bay Spring, Leesville, named Fred. Uh, wh- the name is which? That's right, Fred, and I think we uh, talked the other day. I, I remember the modulation, Roger. <laughs> I thought that was you, but I wasn't sure. Uh, you know, uh, when you're new into this thing as I am, I'm not in, haven't been into it for oh, not quite a year. And so uh, uh, it's, it's quite fascinating. Uh, I haven't been on HF for about six months, and I'm really having a ball. A little old to get into it, but I had to have something to do besides the wife's uh, little little jobs around the house. Oh, Roger, well, you know, uh, those honeydews uh, sometimes pay the bills, so you have to be sure to stay up on your, your honeydews so you have some uh, uh, cash uh, possibilities, Roger. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I said something about the, the more equipment, and I got mixed right quick there. But uh, let me let you get back to your friend there. I can barely hear him. Appreciate you coming back to me. And uh, KN4 BQA, I'll be clear on your final instant to three, my friend. Roger, Fred. Uh, come back with a call sign one more time. I've got a pen that writes now. <laughs> okay. It's Kilo November 4, Bravo, Quebec, Alpha. Roger, Ken. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Roger, Fred. Uh, and uh, you are sounding a choice, uh, as always. Uh, don't change a thing. Uh, that uh, modulation is exactly where it should be. You're, uh, you're uh, ready to go. Taper down. Uh, threes, Fred. Catch you later. It's KC9 VKAV. Uh, Ken, you still there? Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo Victor. KC 9, DKV Ken, you still got a copy? Um, but uh, you're real fine. Uh, you took copy of your phone, I turned on the power, right? Oh, yeah, I think we took about a 40 dB hit just now. Well, that was probably me turning down the power. Now, what would you want to do a thing like that for? Well, I just habitually run this amp at uh, about 500 watts. I had it turned up, which I, I turned it back up. Uh, the extra 150 watts, probably not going to do much on my signal, but I, uh, there was a station I was calling that I was having a little trouble copying me, so I cranked it up. Good. Oh, Roger that, Roger that. I just uh, turn it on, and let it go. <laughs> I'm uh, usually uh, down the road. Anyway, so uh, it seems like I'm constantly in those uh, nebulous areas that uh, need uh, the power. So uh, I've been uh, working uh, on uh, California here lately um, using uh, Half Moon Bay uh, San Francisco SDR for return, transmitting a direct at from uh, like midnight uh, to uh, uh, 3 a.m. or thereabouts. And... Uh, it's really been uh, been interesting. Uh, there's two frequencies that I've been working on: 3817, which is uh, uh, WG6K Stan and WA6DTV Jim. Jim is uh, a, a studio buff, 
as I, and we've both shared uh, MCI 24-track uh, uh, operations. And then the other frequency is 3913. And uh, between those two frequencies, uh, I can get out there with a 9 over or thereabouts, but their return to me direct is about uh, maybe a dB and a half to 2 dB above my noise. So uh, using the uh, half uh, Moon Bay uh, SDR in San Francisco, uh, it's uh, just a, a beautiful thing, Roger. Yeah, very good. Uh, I switched in, oh, by the way, this is 10 minutes. How's this antenna? This one might be a little thin for you, go ahead. Can you AB back and forth uh, at three? Okay. Uh, this is uh, A. Hello, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is B. Hello, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go ahead. Sounds like B might be just a, a dB or so uh, better than the other. Roger. Okay, we'll keep it here. This is where the off-center side goes, of course, the G5 Um Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting, um, again, I guess, propagation um, and uh, to a certain extent power that they can hear you uh, uh, better than you're hearing them. But these uh, the remote hands, I assume that could be used for uh, access to uh, and um, wonder uh, uh, you were discussing the power amplifiers with the other gentleman. Wonder if you're thinking about uh, going to the going the solid state route, or it was just uh, kind of a point of interest. KC9 VKV K2KXK. Roger, just a uh, point of interest. I. I uh <laughs> I haven't the financial uh, wherewithal to uh, make any major changes. Uh, I'm just happy to do what we're doing, and uh, I think there wouldn't be a, maybe a dime's worth of difference between the one and the other if I were were to do that. Uh, and uh, your audio, you know what you need to do is get you, um, let's see, some way to monitor on a meter your audio modulation, because I think just now you might have been off mic a little bit and then came up right at the end or I don't know maybe conditions are varied but uh, your audio just really kicked there the last uh, th three or four words I didn't know if you had pulled off mic or what you know it must be conditions because I'm sitting back in my chair and uh, the mic on a boom so I don't think I moved uh, maybe an inch or two yeah I've got uh, an 811H here which is four 811As and um, it's about the least cost amp you can buy for the per watt. And I, I wasn't sure it's the first time I've ever run an amp on HF. And I didn't want to make a major investment either. And it uh, is probably, uh, to do this in solid state, is at least twice the money. Uh, and... Um, twice the number of boxes because the solid state amps given the lower voltage and the higher current requirements uh, that I've seen I'm by no means an expert uh, they come with uh, or require most of them seem to come with them a separate uh, power supply which you know, can sit over somewhere on the floor if you've got some floor space but uh, the obvious advantage is uh, not having to tune them um, it's kind of like running, uh, especially if one's got a built-in tuner, uh, just running your solid-state um, rig barefoot. You just pick a frequency and start talking. Uh, some of them do have to have the band switch. Some of them don't. But uh, just, uh, I mean, if, if money was not an object, certainly uh, I would have one. But uh, because I think the reliability is there at this point, um, I guess they're at the, the same place that uh, solid state transceivers were at 15 or 20 years ago. KC9 VKV, K2KXK. Roger that. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, 
Uh, about how far are you uh, working your uh, microphone? About six inches. Go ahead. Roger. Someday uh, we'll have to uh, explore the possibilities of uh, close miking. That is, uh, where you're running a windscreen and you're right there, you're touching the mic. Uh, there, you know, my philosophy is uh, uh, I want uh, continuous modulation uh, right uh, from uh, one go to the next, you know. And uh, close uh, mic modulation uh, is uh, extremely consistent. You can't get more uh, consistent modulation. Just we're talking about miking technique because you're at the same uh, absolute point in space for every word, you know. Whereas if you have uh, six uh, inches to play with, you can be plus or minus an inch or so, and, uh, you know, your your level's uh, shifting. So uh, there goes, uh, you know, a slight variance there. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, you are running a uh, swing arm? No, affirmative. Um, and it's the... The, uh, the base, I, I, what I'm doing now is I did get up closer to the mic. I'm, I'm just forcing myself to speak a little softer because I don't want to knock you out of your chair, go ahead. Hey, well, uh, <laughs> knock on. I mean, that's what it's, that's what it's all about. Uh, w uh, well, you uh, need to probably pull the overall mic. If you do work close... Uh, you will have uh, uh, what's called a proximity buildup. That is, uh, low frequencies uh, below 150 cycles will start to cume as you approximate uh, closer operation of the microphone. So you'll have to uh, re-EQ that bottom end uh, uh, down some and your overall modulation uh, down some and depending on whether your compressor is pre mic gain or after mic gain as to what you might have to do you know with the compressor uh, level because it always shift but the thing is once you uh, once you are uh, tight mic'd your level will be uh, very very consistent and uh, will be absolutely uh, uh, the best that it can be as far as uh, you know peak level uh, modulation Roger oh yeah makes total sense makes total sense I'll play with that a little tomorrow um, we uh, I, I don't know if you remember but we were using the $20 dynamic Behringer mic um, which is actually quite popular in ham radio and has gotten really good reviews. It's kind of how I found it. It's kind of a knockoff of uh, the FM58. finish on it and also a rounded and I was afraid and uh, that my fear proved correct that the clamp wouldn't hold it securely as I moved it you know if I wanted to push it out of the way and I wasn't using it so I looked around at different options and it had a uh, it had a post Doesn't move when I move this mic, go ahead. 
Oh, roger that. Uh, let's see uh, what's going on here. Am I getting a? There we go. Um, uh, yeah, we're, <laughs> our conditions are about gone, uh, Ken. But uh, maybe tomorrow we can work on that, uh, or, you know, or sometime, because uh, it's a uh, it's going to be a whole new deal. But uh, you know, if you're you know curious about uh, the difference between. Uh, you know the way you, the way you're doing now is fine, and you've got everything perfect. Uh, just uh, the idea of maybe uh, a, a close uh, close mic uh, might be um, a little more would be the absolute most consistent uh, situation that you can use uh, for uh, increasing your average uh, peak modulation, Roger. Yeah, very good. Oh, I'm definitely game to try it. I'm all about experimenting. And my neighbor from uh, two miles away is here in the north. Hey, Cliff, let's see if Jim can do it. AC2T2. K2K XK. I don't think, I have the amplifier off. Uh, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. This is close to King, North Carolina. AC2 Tango Tango. Uh, hello. The uh, Tango Tango station, uh, I've got you almost. Roger, Roger. Uh, he can just about hear you too, so <laughs> I guess it's not going to work. Uh, your your audio is sounding really good today, Cliff. Um, even though even though you're not very strong in here without the amp, uh, Jim Cliff's uh, my neighbor and buddy, and uh, he's about uh, two miles of the crow flies from me. But uh, you're uh, way stronger than he is. Go ahead. Roger, we have some uh, interesting uh, person tuning up on the frequency. It's always uh, uh, <laughs> uh, not a good idea to do that, sir. You might want to check uh, another frequency to tune up. Uh, we would appreciate it. Anyway, uh, yeah, if you're game on that uh, close uh, miking uh, technique, uh, we'll try that uh, uh, some other day when we will be at the uh, at the uh, peak of our uh, propagation. Uh, so we'll have plenty of time to. Uh, to work on things, Roger. Yeah, very good. Cliff, if you don't mind, Jim, because we've got a couple of things to talk about. So we're uh, working on his computer setup and hook up to um, to his rig to get a pen adapter going for him. So uh, I'll say 73 is I'm not going to be in here much longer. It's about five or ten minutes. I usually pull the switch at around six o'clock, and uh, my wife and I start uh, the dinner preparations. Um, but uh, it's been a pleasure as always, Jim, and uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely try that uh, tomorrow or uh, next time we hook up. Please give me a call if you hear me on, and I'll do the same. So I'll pass it back to you for your final, and then uh, spend a few minutes with Cliff here, and uh, we'll look for you tomorrow or uh, uh, next time we can uh, conditions permit us the uh, privilege of uh, conversing. KC Thine VKV. K2K XK will be clear on your final. Seven threes, and we'll talk to you later. Roger, Roger, Ken. Uh, threes that are ways, sir. Uh, yeah, we are getting ready to uh, head to dinner there. So uh, threes, and uh, have yourself a good night, and uh, we will uh, catch you later. This is uh, Kilo Charlie 9. Victor, Kilo, Victor. will be clear. Seven threes, Jim. A pleasure as always.